Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. In the last video, I showed you that how you can use or set up your Firebase Firestore and also persist as well as fetch information from the Firestore document database. Let me go ahead and run the app. And when I run the app, it actually fetches the information from our Firestore database. The only record right now which is in the database is mow the lawn. So if I go to the Firestore database console, you can see right over here, that's the only record over there. Let's go ahead and add another record. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say, feed the dog, and I'm gonna save it. And it saves, you can see it's saved. And on the Firestore database, you can also see that it is saved correctly. Okay. This is great, this is working fine. Now the question is, well, how do we delete it? If I want to remove or delete some task, how can I do that? So let's go ahead and perform the delete. So we're going to go into jump into the body and you can see that I'm using a list right over here. In order for me to show the delete button, I'm going to remove this list and I'm going to use a for each loop. So I'm going to just simply remove this. Well, I can just remove the whole thing and I'm going to go ahead and create a list. But inside, I'm just going to use for each and I'm going to go through the task ID, meaning something that is unique about the task, which is self itself because it's hashable task. Because remember that the task is dictionary, which is defined right over here. So task is an array and inside the array, you have a dictionary which has a string key and a string value. Now, obviously in your actual application, you're not really going to work this way. You will have probably view models and you will have models and all of those different things. But right now for the sake of simplicity, we're just using dictionaries. Okay, so now we can go ahead and say that, okay, we want to display something. We want to display the title the value of the title key in the dictionary. And if you don't find the title key, then, or if it's not uh, un uh, unwrapping successfully, we're simply going to display the empty string. Now, this is not really going to do much. I mean, it's going to present you the same exact result that we had earlier on, which is fine. But now we can go ahead and call something called on delete. And when we call on delete, we can pass in a function that we want to call when you press the delete button. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say the name of the function will be delete task and we will go ahead and create that function. There is no function called delete task, so let's go ahead and implement this. And it has to be in a specific format, which, is, which means that it is going to take in an index set as an argument. So let me go ahead and build this again. And after building this, I'm gonna run it and then you will be able to see that when you slide from right to left on a particular row, you will be able to see the delete button. So let's go ahead and run this. And once it is running, we'll see when once it has started running, you can see that now I can actually look at the deletes. Now, if I click on delete, the delete task function is going to get called, but it's not really going to do anything. So there are a couple of different things we can do. We can go ahead and go through each task inside the index set. We'll get the index, which is the actual index. And then we will get the actual task, which is in the array called task with a S, passing in the index. And now we have a hold of an object which is inside the task array. And that object will be of type dictionary because well, our task array contains dictionaries. Now we can go ahead and use our firestore.collection, which collection task dot a particular document. Now, if you want to specify a particular document, it is always a good idea to use the ID of the document. Because if you go over here, you can see that this is the unique ID of the document. And we don't really have access to this because the only thing that we are storing in our dictionary is the title itself, which is illustrated in populate task function. 
So we have to make sure that this function is storing the task, but it is also storing the document ID. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create another key for the dictionary. And that key will be called document ID, but it can be anything. This is completely up to you, obviously. And we're going to get the document ID by simply saying doc dot document ID. And this is going to give us a document ID that's unique thing about the array. And that is what you need in order to delete a task or update a task, you need to specify the document ID. That is kind of like the primary key of that document. Now I can go over here and I can say task document ID, and I'm just gonna go ahead and force unwrap it. You can make it more safer if you want to. And then I'm gonna go ahead and call delete function. Pretty simple, right? Now the delete function, just like the other function that we had for the save, which is somewhere over here, it's going to return me the error. So let's go ahead and get the error, if there is any error. So if let error, we're just unwrapping it out, unwrapping the error. And if it is unwrapped, then, well, we're simply going to go ahead and display the error, localized description. Else, well, now we can do something. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and simply call populate task, which is going to again go to the Firebase Firestore and get updated task minus the task that we have just deleted, right? Let's go ahead and build this. And uh, we'll just go ahead and try it out. Once it is finished building, we can go ahead and try it out. So I'm gonna say resume and let's go ahead and run the app. We're just waiting for our task to be displayed. There we go. I'm just gonna remove mow the lawn and I'm gonna delete it. And there we go. I don't know if you noticed, but the task is now gone. Let me go ahead and delete the feed the dog. And there we go. You know, you have to be quick. I mean, unless you have it on the same screen, but now you can see that the task is actually deleted and we don't really have any tasks left. So let's go ahead and add some tasks. Mow, mow the lawn. And let's go ahead and wash the car. And another task maybe we can add, feed the rabbit. And if I go over here, now you can see that I have different tasks available. Okay, so delete is done, that's great. The next step that we want to do is to update a particular task. So if you want to update the task, first of all, we need a page where we can go and, well, update the task. So I'm going to go ahead and create a separate view and I'm going to go ahead and add a file. Uh, Surf UI view is perfectly fine. I'm gonna call this to do detail view, which will allow us to, well, update the task. The first thing that we need to send to this view, which is very important, is the actual task, which in our case is a string string dictionary. But in your case, or eventually we'll see that it will be uh, some sort of an object. But right now, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm just using a dictionary. I don't think in your actual production application, you will use a dictionary like this because it can become really complicated. Okay. The next thing that we need is we need to create some sort of a stack where we can put a text field. I'm go already going to fill out the text field with the existing name of the title. So if you provided some title like wash the car, I'm just gonna fill it out already. And whenever you type something in the text box, it's going to go to a field, which is a state variable, all title. Let's go ahead and create that variable. All right, great. Let's go ahead and also add a little bit of styling to our text field. There we go, so that it can look a little bit nicer. And I'm also going to go ahead and add a button. I think it's still trying to update. So there we go. Just gonna go, to add, go ahead and add a button and I will call it update. All right. There we go. So that, that's how it looks like right now. You can add a little bit of padding if you want to on the V stack so that it's not completely at the corner. 
We also want to, if, if we want to go to this view, we also want to make sure that we can go from content view to that view. And that should be done by uh, the navigation view. Now, I already created an extension called view plus extensions, and you can call embedded navigation view on any kind of a view, and it will embed that view into navigation view. So let's go ahead and use that. I'm going to go right at the end, I guess, over here, which is the VStack, and I'm going to say embed in navigation view. This is going to add a navigation view, and I can go ahead and also add a title. So navigation bar title, I'll simply say task. There we go. I can do the same exact thing for the to-do detail view. Uh, I can go ahead and say embed in navigation view. Or maybe it will actually already have the navigation view, I forgot, because this is the navigation bar. Uh, maybe we can simply add the navigation title. So navigation bar title, edit task or something, whatever you want to call it. All right. And if you want to see this right now, uh, you have to use the embedded navigation view on the actual preview. And now you can see that it kind of appears. All right. Okay. This is great. How do we perform the actual update? Let's go ahead and check this out. Well, we need a reference to the Firestore, we need a reference to the Firebase, and we need to call db.collection.document.update. So I'm gonna go over here into the content view and first pick up these two things. Going to the detail view, going to add that. Great. Now I'm also going to get a reference to a Firestore. So let's go ahead and do that. And this is our Firestore. And now I can finally go inside the update function and I can say self.db.collection, the name of the collection is task. We all know that. Dot document, again, we will refer to the document using the document ID. So task and then I will simply pass in the document ID. I will forcefully unwrap it, but you can make it safer. Dot update data. And this is where you will provide a dictionary which will contain the keys and the values that you want to update. So what do we want to update? So let's say, well, the only thing we want to update is the title. So I'm just gonna provide title and the value of the title is coming from self.title, the things that we write in the text field. And that's what we have done. The final thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we can go from one screen to the other screen, which means that we have to use the navigation link. So I'm gonna go back to the content view, try to find out where the code is for the list, which is right here. And inside over here in the for each, the only control that we have is a text control. We can go ahead and simply wrap this with a navigation link. So navigation link and we can go ahead and type it out, the destination and the label. The destination in this case is to do detail view. And we need to pass in the task. So task will be in this case, the task, which is coming from right here. And for the label, well, the actual content will simply wrap around this text so that that will be the actual content. Let's go ahead and save it. And hopefully now we'll be able to see, once we have the task, we'll be able to tap on the task and go to the detail view. So you can see that I can go ahead and tap on any of these tasks. There we go. And instead of over here feeding the rabbit, I'm just gonna say feed the dog and I'm gonna go ahead and update. Let's go back. You can see it's now no longer feed the rabbit, it's now feed the dog. And I can also confirm over here in our Firestore database that the feed the rabbit has been updated to feed the dog. If I go over here, uh, I can say wash the car. Uh, well, I'm just gonna change this to wash the dishes and I will update. And there we go. You can see it says now wash the dishes. And when I go to the front screen, it's also wash the dishes. So there you have it. We have created our Firebase application integrated with Swift UI. 
which is able to perform the delete, which is able to perform update. And if you check out the previous video, which I will also link in the YouTube description, then you'll be able to learn how to perform the create as well as retrieving the data. In other words, we have covered all four operations, basically CRUD operation, creating, reading, updating, and deleting in a Swift UI app with the Firestore database using the Firebase platform. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. I just released, it was just released yesterday, MVVM design pattern in Swift UI. Now, this is a course for more of an intermediate or higher developers who want to learn more about how to structure and how to create Swift UI applications using the MVVM design pattern. Uh, this course is going to start by introducing you to this to the MVVM design pattern, and then it's going to go into creating multiple apps, including the movies app as well as a banking app. You will learn about how to even create a server in Node.js and Express.js. You will learn about how the client-server relationship is created in your Swift UI applications. You're also going to learn about what exactly is domain models, where would you create domain models, how would you architect your Swift UI application for MVVM design pattern, how would you create a business layer, how would you create a web service layer, all of those things you're going to learn in this course. Now, for a link or a coupon for this course, check out the YouTube description. The other course that I have is the Swift UI decorative interfaces for any Apple device. You already know about this course. Hopefully you have already bought it. Uh, check this one also out. It, the link for all of my courses is in the YouTube description. Thank you so much and have a great day.